This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 6.2.4.4, configuring IP version 6, static and default routes, which is a part of the Routing and Switching Essentials Cisco Network Academy curriculum. Now, hopefully you've already completed or watched the video for our first one that covered 6.2.2.4 in Chapter 6, which covered configuring IP version for static and default routes. This lab is very similar, except for we are enabling IP version 6 routing, which we did uh, in the first class in, in um, the Introduction to Networks, Cisco Network and Academy curriculum. But we are um, also using the same terminology. So remember we talked about recursive static routes in our first lab. Remember recursive means the IP address, or that's the method you're using. You're going to put in at the end of the command the IP address of the next router that we're getting to. So remember I said it's kind of you can think about it like the next hop IP address. Okay. The directly attached method, remember, is you can think about it like the local exit interface. What interface do I send it out of on the router I enter in that route to get to my destination network? And remember, default route, lastly, you think about all zeros because that is physically what you put into the router, coupled with either the recursive or the directly attached method, but the default route is always the same because it's just all zeros for the subnet mask and the IP address, for, or sorry, the network address of the destination network and the destination network subnet mask. And that accounts for any network it doesn't know about. So it's not like uh, accounting for one specific network. It basically just says, if I don't know about it, this is where I'm sending it to so I don't have to drop it. And hopefully the next place will know. Okay. Now, again, remember all of the static routing and stuff we do needs to be look at, looked at through the eyes or lens or perspective of the router we're entering the route on. Routers only know about what is directly plugged into them, no matter what version of IP addressing you're using. So in this particular lab, it tells us to go around and enable IPv6 on all routers first. So let's do that. So on R1, Enable configuration mode. And our command here is IPv6 unicast dash routing. Okay, and hit enter. That enables IPv6 addresses to be able to be utilized and the network to be utilized on R1. R2, same thing. And we're going to do IPv6 unicast routing. And same thing on R3. Okay, so that enables it on all three of them. Now, remember when we look at our routers, Router 1 knows about what's directly plugged into it. So, it. so it knows about the wide area network between Router 1 and Router 2. It also knows about the LAN or local area network it has with Switch 1 and PC1. It does not know how to get up here to the other side of R2. Does not know how to get to the LAN, or sorry, the WAN wide area network between R2 and R3. And it does not know how to get to the local area network on the other side of R3. So we got to enter in three static routes on R1. Okay. Now, R1, it tells us to use the recursive method, okay? So, remember with IP address, IPv6, our stuff looks slightly different, okay? So, our command, instead of IP route, is going to be IPv6 route, okay? We put our destination address here, which is 2001 db8 you remember this is the network address for like the whole network so this should not be assigned to any one device it should be the ip or the network address for that entire uh network okay oh i'm sorry uh that should not be that that's the one it shares with r2 okay let's tackle the the lan r2 has a local area network up here with pc2 and s2 and r2 okay sorry about that disregard the first one so 2001 db8 one, two, colon, colon, 
forward slash 64. Now remember, they're condensed because some of our condensing rules when you shorten the addresses instead of it being four uh, characters. And remember, the characters can be 0 through 9, A through F uh, in each one. And instead of four characters in each of the spots, you can condense it down when there's back-to-back -back zeros, a leading zero in each one. You can erase those out. So uh, remember that when you're doing your condensing. Okay. So IPv6 route, we got our destination address in there, our destination subnet mask. Okay. And now we need to put our next top IP address. So when you think about when it leaves R1 and it's going up here to R2, or sorry, to PC2. All right, if it leaves R1 and it needs to get up here to this network, where does it go to next? The first address it hits is S000 on R2. So what is the IP address of S00 on R2? It is right here. Now we only need the IP address. We do not need the subnet mask along with it, okay? Let me show you that's all on one line there, okay? So let's tackle the wide area network between R2 and R3. So we got IPv6 route. That wide area network is 2001 DB8 1A002 colon colon forward slash 64. Remember with IP version 6, the subnet mask is right up on the network address. And again, remember that network address it identifies the whole WAN between R2 and R3. It does not it is not assigned to a specific device. The specific device one is where it's assigned to the interface itself. So again, when it leaves R1 and it's trying to get over here between R2 and R3, where does it get to first? The next place it goes is still R2's serial 000 interface. So that address that we put in there before is still the same because it's got to go through that interface next before it gets to the wide area network between R2 and R3. That's just how this particular topology works out. And same thing here. When R1 needs to get over here to S3 or PC3, okay, so we got IPv6 route. 2001 DB8 1364. We put that same IP address because if it leaves R1 to get over here, it's got to go to S000 on R2 first. Okay. So we got those three routes in there for R1. It should know how to get everywhere. But again, it's got to know how to get back to. Okay. So on R2, we got to enter in two routes. So we know about the wide area network connected between R2 and R1. We know about the wide area network connected between R2 and R3. And we also know about the uh, plug being LAN up here with PC2 and S2. The only thing we don't know about is the LAN connected to R1 and the LAN connected to R3. So we got to put in two static routes on R2. Let's look at what method they tell us to use. Now again, in a real world situation, you could use any method as long as it works and you have the information. Uh, but this one, we need to make sure it grades it correctly. So it says configure a directly attached static route from R2 to the R1 LAN, okay? So we are going to uh, configure the attached static route, okay? So it's IPv6 route. And to get to the R1 land, we got 2001, DB8, colon 1, colon 1, colon, colon, 4 slash 64. And what interface is it going to go out of locally on R2 to get to R1? It is going to send it out of S000 every single time. So I'm going to type in S000. Okay. So it's going to send it out of R2's S000 to get to R1. Remember, the directly attached, you can think of local exit interface. That's what I always say uh, to kind of remind myself. All right. So now we want to uh, make sure we get the next one, which is R2 to R3's LAN. So we're going to do IPv6 route 2001. DB8, 1, 3, 
64, so that's going over here. And this time though, if we need to leave R2 and get down here, we're actually going to go out of S001. All right. Okay. Now, it says configure a default route on R3. Now, remember, because of how our topology is laid out, all right, R3 does not know about the LAN connected to R2, the LAN, or sorry, the WAN between R2 and R1, and the LAN on the other side of R1. So, we can actually, though, put in a default route, which is basically saying all zeros, anything that I don't know about on R3 that's not directly plugged in, I'm going to send it out of this interface to get to R2. And, and luckily, R2 knows about its way to everything. So it will actually work here. So IPv6 route again. Now before we did IP route for IP version 4, we did 0.0.0.0 for the network address, 0.0.0.0 for the subnet mask, and then we use one of the recursive or the directly attached method. Here, remember, we can condense our address down. So instead of putting all zeros here, remember when there's multiple sections of back-to-back -back zeros, we can just put a double colon? Well, if they're all zeros, we can just put a double colon, okay? So that's all you need for this route is two colons and a forward slash zero. So the subnet mask still needs to be zero too. So that is actually an all zero route. <laughs> Now, let's see if it tells us to use recursive or directly attach. It doesn't. Uh, oh, yes, it does. Configure a recursive default route. So we're actually going to send it to our next hop IP. So the next IP address that it would get to every single time it leaves R3 is the serial 001 interface on R2. So the serial 001 interface here on R2, okay, just the IP address of it is 2001 colon db8 colon 1 colon a002 colon colon 1 and I just got that from the address and chart based off of where it looks like it's going right so again this is what a default route looks like in IPv6 very short four characters right two uh, colons a forward slash and a zero and that's it okay and then we got 60 out of 60 and you should have full connectivity from end to end if you try to ping it uh, because again it can get to the each device and back and forth because remember a ping has to travel back as well all right so again the big difference here <coughs> you're putting IPv6 instead of IP uh, route you're putting IPv6 route also you have to turn on IPv6 unicast routing but you are still using the recursive method the default uh, route for all zeros and the directly attached method. Um, and you still need to look at each route that is not directly plugged in. Um, you need to look at having a route for that as well as, you know, what method you use, depending on which one you use, you kind of need to look at it through the lens of that router so you can know whether to use the next top IP address for recursive or a local exit interface for directly attached.